All right, everybody, I think we're all good to go here with the, uh, with the technical aspect. My name is Rory Cooper, and I am the Recreation and Sport Coordinator here at Sheridan. And I've asked some amazing students to help us out with the Bruins Healthy Living Series. And I'm going to pass it over to Ravinia to take it away. And they're going to talk about some nutrition stuff today. Awesome. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Ravinia. I am here with. My name is Shanna. And my name is Bilal. And today we'll be giving you a presentation about um, nutrition strategies for college students by college students. So again, just wanna say thank you so much for coming and good evening. We have our table of contents here. So our very first, con very first section is gonna be tips and tricks. Shanna is gonna be going through that for you guys. Then we have healthy alternatives, which we'll all be going through. And last but not least, I'll be going over some quick and easy meals for you guys. All right, guys, so I'm Shanna. I'll be helping you guys, or I'll be running you guys through the tips and tricks portion of this presentation, just in hopes of providing students at Sheridan with some ways to overcome or improve their current nutritional status. So tip number one is to identify your barriers and set some goals. So identifying some barriers is really important in helping yourself to find solutions in overcoming the challenges you might face. So there are many common barriers that a lot of people might face when they're trying to start something new uh, in terms of nutrition. Uh, one common barrier is uh, that it's too costly to eat healthy. And while it can be quite costly to eat healthy and fresh foods, it's not the only option. Some alternatives um, would be to purchase frozen foods to help preserve your fruits and vegetables much longer. There are a lot of misconceptions um, with this point and frozen foods altogether um, <clears throat> because um, just there are many misconceptions and a lot of people think that they're not as good as fresh foods, but that is wrong. And they actually have their very nutrition or nutrient dense foods, even if they're frozen. You don't always have to reach for name brands. Generic brands are a great way of saving money as well. Um, and even buying foods that are in season since they tend to be more inexpensive at that time. So you can even freeze your favorite fruit at a certain season and then save them for later in the year and they will be good since they're frozen. Another barrier is lack of time. But a way to overcome this is to plan ahead of time, because this is a great way of ensuring that you have all of the ingredients that you need in your kitchen ready to go when you want to cook your meals. You can also ask your friends and family to help you prepare and cook your meals. It really helps cut down the cook time and it just provides you with a bit more fun doing tasks that you might not want to do at that time. And another point is to meal prep. So preparing meals ahead of time and keeping them frozen or refrigerated is a great time saver when you're looking for something quick to grab on your way out. Especially as a student, I understand it could be quite difficult to bring some nutrient dense um, meals to to go. So that's meal prepping is definitely a great way. Another barrier is lacking motivation, but you can always ask for help, reach out, talk to your friends and family and understand how others around you implement realistic, healthy eating habits. And remember that change takes time. Taking one step at a time can help reduce the overwhelming emotions surrounding change. So don't forget to celebrate the small accomplishments. The next part of this tip is to set goals. So after you've identified some barriers that you might face, set yourself some goals. And I provided a nice little template for setting goals for yourself. And that is called the SMART goal setting method. And it can be really useful in organizing your ideas and laying everything, that, everything down to give yourself a better idea of what needs to happen to change. So specific is the first component of this goal setting method. What is it that you want to do? So an example of this, plan to cook your meals instead of going out so you can avoid eating unhealthy foods. The next point, measurable. How much and how often will you do it? So making my meals six a day and then the seventh day, I'll allow myself to have one more unhealthy meal that I really enjoy eating. So that could be a great stepping stone. Can you do it? And the way that you have to answer this question is, do you have time to go on Saturday to get all of your grocery supplies and all of your ingredients? And that can be one day where you set for yourself to go through with the goal that you set in place for yourself. 
And then relevant, is it helpful for you? And a question, or you can answer this question by saying it's very helpful for you because if you eat out very frequently and are noticing unhealthy eating habits, then this goal is suitable for you. And lastly, time bound. When will you do it? So you can answer this in a way that says, I'd like to start now and in four months, reach a place where I could be happy with making foods I love and are healthy. Next tip I have for you guys is to meet your daily nutritional recommendations. So the left image there represents a picture of what your full meal should look like. Um, as mentioned in Canada's food guide. So always check out the link in the bottom left corner to find out more information on how to meet your daily nutritional recommendations. But to summarize, you really want to make sure you eat three meals per day, include your, include your fruit and vegetables, eat your protein and choose whole grain foods. And I understand as a student, it can be really important or really easy to skip a meal throughout the day, especially with busy student schedules, but you want to focus on consuming quality meals that will satiate you longer, keep you full longer. Now, what do you do if you find yourself consuming less than three meals per day? Meal planning is a great solution. This is a great time saver, saves time, money, helps you stay organized, and is a great way to ensure that you're meeting your nutritional needs on a regular basis, especially if you're on the go. Next tip is to drink some water. So let's dive a little deeper into the topic of hydration. So hydration, as mentioned in Canada's food guide, we always recommend that you make water your drink of choice. Many drink options have a lot of calories, sugar, sodium, unwanted fats, and these are all things that you can avoid by making water your drink of choice. Occasionally, you can also, you can obviously, you don't have to limit yourself every time you have a beverage, but making water your drink of choice is great because it is a zero calorie option. And those calories that you would consume in a sugary drink like pop or juice, you can displace those to a larger meal at the end of the day or at the end of the week that you really enjoy eating. Now, it's important not to drink your calories. You really want to focus on eating full meals, like, like I mentioned earlier, fruits and vegetables, whole grains, and protein. Now, some tips into um, really making sure that you're hydrating. You can always add some fruits or vegetables um, to add flavor to your water. You can keep a reusable water bottle so you can take it anywhere that you go. Uh, drink water when you're eating out and even working out because you dispense a lot of uh, your body's water content throughout the day through breathing, sweating, and all of those things. So it's really important to stay hydrated. Next tip is to learn essential cooking skills. And this might sound obvious, but a lot of people don't know essential cooking skills. Wash your hands, wash your fruit and vegetables before cooking them. Don't leave your station unattended because it could get um, dangerous. You also wanna learn about how to store your food properly, how to read food labels properly, because that is ultimately what's gonna help you preserve your food longer and is gonna ensure that you're putting quality foods in your body. The last tip that I have for you guys is to explore different options. Stay up to date with some new recipes and try them out yourself. It can be really helpful to do this and switch things up because it avoids boredom and loss of motivation. You don't always want to eat the same thing, but you can also adjust some recipes based off of your culture. If you really like a certain recipe um, as part of your family tradition, include it in your meals. It can make it really exciting to uh, switch up some new recipes and then include things that you enjoy. But as important as it is to stay away from foods high in sodium, saturated fats, and sugar, it's really important that you eat things that you love in moderation is the key word. And on to uh, Bilal. Hey guys, so now we're going to go over some healthy alternatives to some potential bad habits that we may see as students. As we all know, each one of us is super busy as a student and we always feel like we have no time. We so as a result, we tend to rely too much on caffeine to keep us awake during lectures and studying, which can be bad for our overall health in excess. So a healthy alternative to too much caffeine or coffee or energy drinks for that matter could be limiting consumption to one cup per day so that we can get our fix in without overdoing it. Also a very important note on this one is to try and emphasize good sleep hygiene and good sleep habits. 
one thing that works really well is to try aim to keep a consistent wake time rather than a consistent sleep time. And it's almost as if your sleep schedule magically falls into place when you wake up at the same time every single day. So then as a result, you'll have more stable energy for the, for the day and you won't need caffeine to pull you over every single day. Another potential bad habit we may have is an over-reliance on supplements. So supplements, don't get me wrong, supplements definitely have a time and place, especially for our student athlete population, but we should make sure we don't skip out on meals because we're chugging protein shakes constantly day in, day out. So um, a healthy alternative to that, uh, try and make sure you have balanced meals throughout the day, which includes tons of good protein to fuel your training and studying. And that can be done through meal prep as Shanna previously said. Um, and last but not least, uh, hydration. It's super easy for us to grab a Coke during studying or in lecture, but those drinks are definitely full of sugars and unwanted calories and have no nutritional value. Um, to them. So a great alternative is just sipping on water throughout the day while you study, while you're in lecture, and um, keeping a reusable bottle with you at all times so you never forget to drink your water. Now uh, let's move on to some quick and easy meals with Irvinia. Great job, Bilal. Great job, Shanna. Alrighty, so we're in our final section of the presentation. Here I will be going over some quick and easy meals for you guys. But first things first, why is eating healthy so hard? The goal is to always eat healthier, to clean up our diets, but that's a lot easier said than done. Eating healthy and actually preparing healthy meals are two very different things. Find the time to create and produce healthy meal is 10 times harder, especially when things such as school, work, and personal commitments come into play. With busy schedules and constant deadlines looming, creating a healthy meal or snack can be very, can be extremely difficult which while purchasing a fast food meal is quick and easy. And there's always that internal debate. It's like, do I get a burger? Do I get a pizza? Or do I go home and cook? So just, just so you know, you're not the only one who goes through this fast food versus healthy food. So I know in the section prior, Shanna had went over with us five great tips and tricks on how to improve our nutritional status. By that same token, I'll be sharing three tips for maintaining a healthy diet. First thing we have is a meal prep. So before we begin, I'll just like to define quickly what a meal prep is. It's the concept of preparing uh, meals and snacks uh, ahead of time so that you have the meal on the day that you want it. Meal preps, so setting aside that allocated time once a week or every few days, to prepare future meals allows you to save loads of time to create nutrition, nutritious meals and to control your portions. Um, tip number two, snacks. I don't know about you guys, but I love snacks. Like I love snacks. And before you say to yourself, snacks are bad for you, that's actually not fully true. Snacks are amazing, especially when it's good for you snacks, such as fruit, veggies, and low fat dairy products. Snacks help to boost your mood, aid in keeping you alert and awake, which is great for class, as well as they help you to avoid overeating. And my very last tip is going to be enjoy what you eat. Listen, no one likes to eat things that don't taste good or that they aren't too fond of. So enjoy the food you eat and eat whatever you want in moderation. So for example, I love cheesecake. So instead of cutting out cheesecake, what I could do is instead of buying a whole one, I could purchase pre-packaged slices. So that way I'm controlling my portion size and I'm still enjoying what I want to eat. So right now we're about to get into some really, really yummy meals. That's why we have Poo there. I was really excited for these meals as well. The first one we have is maybe on our left that we have our overnight oats. Overnight oats are amazing because they um, keep you feeling satisfied for longer. They're high in fiber, very budget friendly, less than $5, really easy to consume in the morning as well. You just shovel it in, you're good to go. So I'm just gonna go over quickly what overnights are and how to just make them just a general run through. The prep time is only five minutes. You need some oats, a sweetener of your choice. You can use brown sugar, white sugar, maple syrup, agave, whatever works for you. A teaspoon of vanilla extract and some milk of your choice. It could be oat milk, almond milk, whatever you want. All you need to do is combine your oats, your milk, your sweetener, and your vanilla extract into a container. Mix it up nicely. You're going to put that in the fridge, let it sit for at least six hours. And in the morning, when you're ready for it, you can stir it, toppings in. I personally love to add some berries as well as some nuts and enjoy. Next, we have our pasta salad, which is right in the middle. It looks delicious, all those fun colors. Pasta salads are amazing because they can help fuel your brain, 
Uh, you get to add whatever you want into your pasta salad. It could be eaten cold or um, heated as well. You can have a pasta salad for up to five days in your refrigerator. The usual prep time for this is 10 to 15 minutes. And all you're gonna need is some pasta, pasta for your choice, um, any type of veggies you like. I personally like bell peppers and cherry tomatoes, some cheeses and a little bit of oil and your seasoning to taste. And all you're gonna wanna do for a quick easy pasta salad is to bring a large pot of um, salted water to boil, add your pasta, cook it until you like it, drain the pasta, put in, put in all your greens into a giant bowl, mix it up, uh, taste for seeding, adjust to your taste and enjoy. And last but not least, we have our one pan chicken and veggies. So I know I said chicken, but if you're a vegetarian, pescatarian, you don't eat meat at all, you can definitely substitute a different type of protein for chicken, okay? This one's great because it's easy to clean up, it's really delicious, and it's very visually appealing. So all you're gonna need for this one is the protein of your choice, some starches, so I personally like potatoes, so I get those, um, some broccoli, some carrots, whatever type of vegetables you want, garlic, rosemary, olive oil, and the seasonings of your choice. For this meal, it's only take 20 to 35 minutes, which is perfect time for Netflix episode. All you're gonna wanna do is line your baking pan with aluminum foil, layer your protein and your veggies. You're gonna evenly distribute your garlic, your rosemary, and your seasonings over the entire pan. Drizzle with a little bit of oil, bake at 300 degrees for 20 to 35 minutes, serve it up and enjoy. on this next slide here, if you want to take a second here, you can write down the key points of the recipe. Again, these are just very specific portion sizes, um, but it's completely up to you what you do and how you do. Do you have any questions or comments? If so, it's now your time to ask. Thank you very much, everyone. That was amazing. That was some excellent information for students, and I know it'll be very useful for them. Uh, and I know the next presentations over, over the next three weeks will be very useful as well. So thank you. Thank you so much. And that concludes the presentation. Thank you, everyone.